So I'm making this video just to document a bit of my thought process around settling on a Linux distribution for my daily use. And I actually made up my mind, I think a little while back, I've actually been using Fedora for a few months now. And after I started using Fedora, it just kind of stuck. And there was a couple of times where I tried some other distributions, but I kept coming back to Fedora. So I just wanted to make this video to kind of share why, in case there are other people out there who are transitioning from Windows and thinking about Linux, you're curious about different distributions and what you need to pick. I just figured I'd share some of my logic and why I ended up, again, with Fedora as my daily driver. So this is my desktop, and I know a lot of people will look at this and say, oh, it's super tiny, we can't see anything, and I will be changing the resolution here in a second, but one of the main reasons that I ended up with Fedora is because it has really good support for both KDE and NVIDIA. And so one of the first things you need to understand is the system that I'm running. I am using Fedora 40, I've got the Linux 6.10.12 kernel that just got updated today. I'll talk about updates here in a little bit because that is one of the main upsides of using Fedora. Um, I run three displays and they are fairly high resolution, high refresh displays. And so that means I need to pretty much have really good Wayland support to make that work really well. And because I'm using an NVIDIA 3090, I need really good NVIDIA driver support. So if I open up the display configuration, you will see my three monitors. And whenever you have everything running on Wayland with good drivers, this interface is so easy because it handles scaling really well. And so I've got my display scaled to 150% here. And it allows me to position things really well so I can easily graphic manage my displays. It even has HDR support, which I don't use, but I could, and I've tested it, and it seems to work fine for everything except for gaming. And so just with that out of the way, let me go ahead and I'll rescale this to 1080p, and now for the rest of the video, things will just be a lot easier for you to see. So one of the first big choices that you need to make if you're thinking about picking a Linux distro is actually what desktop environment you want to run because that has a much larger impact on your day-to-day -day experience than pretty much any other piece of the distribution. Now, the main ones that everybody tends to run are going to be GNOME and KDE. There are a bunch of others. Now, me personally, coming from Windows, I really, really don't like GNOME. It's not that it's bad. It's just very Mac-like, and I just don't like the interface. Now, again, other than that, it's a really great desktop environment, so don't take this as any offense towards anybody that uses it. It's just not my preference. And I actually think I liked Cinnamon maybe even more than KDE, but my problem with Cinnamon is it didn't have good Wayland support. And so that left me basically with no other option but to go with KDE. And so that was kind of step one. Whenever I was choosing different distributions to try, I wanted to make sure that they came with kind of built-in KDE support or native or what you would call like a spin on Fedora or something like that, right? I didn't want to have to work hard to get KDE up and running. And the fact is, is that really that's not that big a deal because KDE is one of the two largest desktop environments. It's everywhere. I could have gone with almost any distribution and had a good KDE experience. Now, when looking for distributions beyond just the desktop environment support, the next big thing that I was worried about was, again, the fact that I am running an NVIDIA graphics card. That means that I want pretty up-to-date driver support. And here you can see that I'm currently using the 560.35 driver from NVIDIA. So if you go out on NVIDIA's website and you look at the current Linux drivers, the 560.35 driver is basically about as new as it gets. And so this is one of the upsides of Fedora is that they have on the RPM Fusion repositories NVIDIA drivers and they keep them pretty up to date. And this is where I would say you kind of get into the second big choice whenever you're selecting a distribution. So again, number one, what does desktop environment do you want? Number two, how up-to-date do you want their feature set to be? 
Now, this kind of overlaps with another question, which is how good is the support for proprietary or non-free drivers? Now, with Fedora, it's not quite a rolling release. They do release with versions. So I'm currently on Fedora 40, and the next version will be Fedora 41. However, Fedora is on the faster updating end of Linux distributions. So there's kind of a spectrum with Linux distributions, whether they do fixed releases, semi-rolling, or rolling releases. So a rolling release is kind of arch, right? It's known for being very up-to-date, but that can potentially come with some instability. Then you've got very fixed, stable distributions, and that's really where Debian comes in. So with fixed releases or very stable releases, you see basically you're talking about Debian. And it's a very classic, extremely stable distribution with packages that get really solid testing before they get released. And there are a ton of distributions based on Debian because it is. It's very stable. It's a very solid platform. Now, I mentioned earlier that I, I really liked Linux Mint quite a bit. I really liked the Cinnamon desktop, even though it didn't have good Wayland support. But another kind of issue for me was the lack of up-to-date NVIDIA drivers. And it's not that they're that out of date, but if you look at like Ubuntu's packages, which is what Mint is based on, they pull a lot from the Ubuntu project, they only have the 550 drivers. Now that may not seem like a big deal, but again, as an NVIDIA user, there are new features that NVIDIA has added to their very, very recent drivers that I wanted access to. Now, one of these in the 555 driver was the support for explicit sync in Wayland. And I don't want to get into all that, but it was something that I, I wanted to make sure that I had available because it can be helpful in some circumstances. And so with this, I needed a distribution that was fairly up to date. Now, whenever you look at rolling release Linux distributions, the biggest and most famous is going to be Arch, right? Arch Linux is known for being extremely up to date, but again, I felt like Arch was just going to be a bit more than I could handle because I am fairly new to Linux and I don't know a ton about it. So I was a bit intimidated by Arch. Now, I have installed it and I did test it in a virtual machine, but I didn't really feel confident in being able to maintain an Arch system. Now, it does have some derivatives in Endeavor and Manjaro, uh, but again, with those, I didn't really see myself on those. I think I tried Manjaro or Endeavor. I can't remember which one. I didn't really care for it actually that much. It didn't work very well. I kind of, I don't know. I just didn't click with it. And one of the other major rolling release distros is actually OpenSUSE. Now, this is a great distribution and I really, really wanted to love it. Um, because it has kind of all the things that I thought I wanted. It is a rolling release, but it tends to be a bit more slow than Arch, so it's not quite as up-to-date. You get a little bit more stability out of it, I would say. Now, again, we're splitting hairs because it's still going to be a fairly up-to-date distro. It also defaults to KDE, which is something that I wanted. And so I thought, ah, this is going to be exactly what I'm looking for. But whenever I actually ran OpenSUSE, I kept having some issues. And some of the problems I had, like I had some trouble installing DaVinci Resolve and getting that to work correctly. Um, Zipper, their package manager, is kind of the butt of jokes because it is so slow. But beyond just slow packages, like I said, I had problems getting certain pieces of software to run. And that was actually because OpenSUSE's package names don't always line up with what software expects. And so with DaVinci Resolve, I was having to rename files even though I had what DaVinci Resolve needed, it wasn't called the right thing. And so they had slightly changed the package name and that meant that I had problems. So it turned out to just be easier to go with Fedora, even though I like OpenSUSE and maybe a little better philosophically, Fedora just worked better for me. So the last point that I wanna talk about is just the community support for different distributions. And this is a graph that somebody got from Reddit, so I don't really think it truly reflects the user base, 
but it does speak to a little bit about the community activity that you might encounter with different distributions. You can see Arch is really big. Now, I kind of see that two ways. Um, it does have a lot of community members, but that could be because if you're running Arch, you might have a lot of questions. Ubuntu is extremely popular. It's based on Debian. The downside of Ubuntu is the same as with Debian. You get kind of some older packages with it. It's not as up to date as I wanted it to be. That kind of gets into some of these other communities and the ones that are very popular that you're always going to hear about are things like Mint, Debian, System76's PopOS, or Pop OS, I'm sure somebody's going to want it to be called. Um, but Fedora has a very large community. It's also from Red Hat, and so you get a lot of overlap with RHEL, with Fedora. Now, there's some downsides to Fedora. I'm not saying there aren't, but you got to keep in mind, if you are new to Linux, you are probably going to need some help from time to time. And having a large amount of people using your distro means you are more likely to find somebody that's already answered your question somewhere. Or if it's a new question, you're going to find a lot of people out there probably willing and able to help you. So the one problem that I had, I think, was related to this bug that's out here on Red Hat Bugzilla. It was something to do with Mesa and SDDM, and the community caught on really quick when I was describing the problem. Within about 15, 20 minutes, they're like, hey, you just need to roll back to a different version. And this has since been resolved, and so for the past month, it hasn't been an issue. So again, community support is pretty big. And on Fedora, you've got a really big community to lean on. You know, this is where if you're running a really big distro like Debian or Fedora, you end up finding that tons of software that is packaged for Linux comes with RPMs or .dev files, meaning you can get a lot of stuff that is built for Red Hat Fedora already. And even if it's not included in your repositories, it's one of the most common distributions out there, and so you're not having to build stuff from source. It's already going to be packaged up for you. So back to the beginning, why did I end up just really settling on Fedora? Well, number one, it certainly offers KDE native spins, so that made Wayland support really easy. It is very up-to-date, so you can see I've got a very up-to-date Linux kernel. You know, I, th I think the current most up-to-date stable kernel is 6.11.2 at the time of recording. So I'm right up there, very close to the most up-to-date kernels. I've got really up-to-date NVIDIA drivers. So all that's to my advantage. And the one time that I really needed support, the community helped me figure it out in like 15 minutes via the Fedora Discord. Um, and so that's kind of it. That's all I wanted to say in this video is kind of my thoughts behind going about picking a distribution, why I picked Fedora, um, because it works, right? It's large. It has plenty of support. It's very up to date. It allows me to do all the different functionality that I need, and I don't have to worry that much about things being stale or being in a very small community where support might be a struggle. It's not perfect, but I think it is, again, kind of the Goldilocks distribution for me right now. As things change over time, maybe that will change. But for now, it looks like I'm going to be sticking with Fedora for the foreseeable future. Now, I'm sure everybody out there's got their own pet distribution that you know and love. And if you want to give me feedback, call me an idiot, tell me that I made the wrong decision. Of course I made the wrong decision. Every distro is terrible and the wrong distro. But, you know, here we are. So feel free to leave your feedback down below. That's all I got for you today. Thanks.